Ladies and gentlemen, Jasper Carrot. Thank you very much. Good evening. And, uh, ah, late arrivals. Good evening. Hello. Hello. You the newly married couple. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nice to see you up in the bed again. <laughs> well, it's in tune, so we'll get on with it. <laughs> and uh, do you like the lovely strings? Isn't that... I've got a deal going on strings, you know. I buy all the Bay City Rollers cast-offs. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're not exactly new, but they're, they're not used, are they? <laughs> So what I'd do tonight's term, this week, is to talk about Birmingham. <laughs> Anybody from Birmingham? Yamaha is there now, Yamaha is there now. Because I was uh, actually born and bred there and uh, still live in Birmingham. I live, in, uh, I live in a cottage uh, in Birmingham. <laughs> well, it's, it's like a cottage. In fact, it's a toilet with an outside house. <laughs> and we, <laughs> we bought it, uh, oh, a while ago now. And it was very cheap, very cheap. And when we went to have a look at it, the estate agent showed us around about three minutes flat. And uh, he was brilliant, you know and uh, avoided all the niggly questions like, where's the door? <laughs> and uh, what are the trout doing in the damp course? <laughs> <laughs> and we bought it. We bought it ridiculously cheap. And we found out why. <laughs> we are, in fact, the last house in the flight path to Birmingham Airport. <laughs> and I've come up what the uh, little tyre marks on the roof. <laughs> It hasn't affected me, though! <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's great fun watching the Aer Lingus planes come in sideways. What? <laughs> you can see them signalling out the windows, you know. Oh, they <laughs> <laughs> Big L on the tail. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes. We, we just, uh, we've just had our cesspit finished. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what one was, you know. Until I got the bill. <laughs> 800 quid. Hey, all that just for cesspit. <laughs> I, I, um, I often enjoy asking people, like, you know, uh, what do they associate with Birmingham? And um, usually it's holidays. <laughs> uh, the Bull Ring, most people have heard of the Bull Ring, uh, but it's perhaps its, its best known landmark now is, is Spaghetti Junction. And uh, yeah, you've obviously never been on Spaghetti Junction, or you wouldn't be here now. <laughs> mm. At, and, and isn't it strange how names catch on? Because, I mean, it's not officially called Spaghetti Junction. I mean, its official title is, in fact, the, the Midlands Motorway Link System. Hmm. <laughs> It's the locals call it Spaghetti Junction. You know, basically, because I made a right bolognese the whole of it. <laughs> but you've got three major motorways coming together. You've got the M1, the M5, and the M6. You know, and like there's six A roads come into it as well, and four B roads, and a couple of cul-de-sacs. Like, <laughs> it's cut the time of getting through Birmingham by about a week. <laughs> and uh, it was opened by the Queen Mother. Quite a day for Birmingham. We don't get royalty very often. I think the last one we had was Nehru. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the city council thought, like, you know, royalty, splash out of it. So uh, they bought all uh, about 150 Union Jacks for the kids, right? And um, just moved them up the road every sort of half an hour. <laughs> Took the Queen Mother on a detour, wrong. Uh, are the kids ready? Yeah, send her past. <laughs> and uh, we had, a, we had a, 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 a carpet from the airport into Birmingham, which is like seven mile, and it's three foot wide. Car missed it completely. <laughs> <laughs> and they bought about £10,000 worth of army surplus bunting. Hmm. 
Have you ever seen army bunting? No. It's camouflage colour. <laughs> you couldn't see it. <laughs> They're still looking for it. Yeah? And they forgot the ribbon that the Queen Mother had got to cut and they strung this great big length of electricity cable across the bloody motor. Right. Gave the Queen Mother a great big pair of calipers and she's there. Yeah, right, right, right. All the traffic's rushing by because it opened the day before. <laughs> Queen Mother Henry, don't be silly, dear. <laughs> <laughs> you can always tell. This is tip, 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 tip. If ever you use Spaghetti Junction, right, you can always tell people who aren't from Birmingham. Stand out tomorrow. Because, like, basically, if you're from Birmingham and you know Spaghetti Junction, you drive on the inside lane. It's all you ever do. It's six lanes wide, right? Never touch the other five. Just the inside lane. And don't move. You can always tell people from outside Birmingham, they're behind you going, what the bloody hell? <laughs> <laughs> you don't even see me. Oh, stuff this. <laughs> <laughs> Mugs. <laughs> Until they try and get off and everybody's on the inside lane going, no chance. <laughs> if, ever you, if ever you see a driver do something wrong, What's the first thing you do? You look for him, right? Or her. And it's either like, ah, it's a bloody woman, look. Look. <laughs> knew it'd be a bloody woman. Look. It's an old man. I knew it'd be an old man. <laughs> it's an old woman, look, it's an old woman. It's an old kid, look, I told you. Hey, it's, an <laughs> it's a darkie, I knew it'd be a darkie. <laughs> it's a Jehovah's Witness, definitely. <laughs> If you're a white Anglo-Saxon male Protestant, look, you prat! <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I bet the, the funniest thing, the funniest thing in the world, for me personally, I'd like to do it for you, if I can. And this is, for me, the funniest thing I've ever read, right? And uh, I didn't write this. I didn't write this. This was written by loads of different people who didn't have a clue what they were writing at the time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I found it on a bus in Birmingham. Sorry, or a buzz. <laughs> a buzz in Birmingham. And I'd been, I'd been to a picture house, uh, strangely enough, with a friend of mine. And there's a, there's a picture house in, in Birmingham called the Cinephone. <laughs> Oh, you've been, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. It's like, it's, they show all these um, double treble X film things. You know? <laughs> yeah, you've seen them, like, you know, things like uh, Sex and Lust in Sweden and uh, Kiss My Whip. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'd been to see a film called Last Tango in Paris, you see, and someone said, uh, well, if you like that, you know, it's the cinephone for you. <laughs> so I went along with a mate of mine, George, because he'd never seen these sort of films either, you know. And we popped along there. And I don't think I've ever been so bored in all my life. I won't ask you whether you've been, because like, you'd, never, you'd never admit it anyway. <laughs> but really, they, they're, they're all imported, aren't they? They're all, uh, they're all from Sweden and, and Denmark, and, like, and um, the photography's awful, and there's, there's, there's no story, and you can't understand a word they're on about. And like, I mean, you're not, you're not reading the captions, are you? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> like me and George sort of sat there, bored stiff with this lot. And, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> I can wait, I can wait. <laughs> and after a while, we decided to leave. And it was about 10 to 4 in the afternoon, something like that. And uh, we'd been in about three days, I suppose. <laughs> it would take a bit, you know. And we had to catch a bus, because I'd got a motor, I'd got this Anglia. And uh, it, was, it was in the garage being rebuilt. <laughs> having the cellophane put back in the windows you know. <laughs> and we had to catch a bus and we caught a number one right? now a number one bus in Birmingham is like is the school bus if you're a Brummie it's quite famous and um, school out time in Birmingham is four o'clock 
and uh, the bus has to go through a place called Moseley Village. <laughs> right, you may have heard of that. It's like the Chelsea set of Birmingham. <laughs> yeah. In fact, they say if all the Moseley dolly chicks were laid end to end, no one would be in the slightest bit surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in Mosley, there's, there's a school there called Mosley, Mosley Mixed. It was called Mosley Grammar. Well, very good school, because I used to go there. And excellent school. No problem about that. And I, in fact, I got two O levels there. <laughs> I, <think> too. <laughs> I got maths and art. Hmm. Not a great start in life, is it? Maths and art. <laughs> I was painting computers for about four years. <laughs> and this, this Mosley Mix, it's now called Mosley Mix, it's still all boys, strangely enough. I've never figured that one out yet. <laughs> Education is very progressive. And they have this, this school has this terrible reputation for violence. You know, they, they kidnap other school prefects and put them into meat pies. And, like <laughs> and uh, four o'clock is school out time, right? And we're on this bus, and we get into Mosley Village at half past four, right? And apparently the first three buses have got through. Right? And we're on the one, right, they're going to stop. And I was like, there's 400 of them in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Me and George are sitting on the top. I said, they're not getting on here, are they, George? <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> they rip the door off. Wrong. <laughs> 400 on the top deck. The conductor was terrified. No idea, tell him. And then they're opening all the windows, gobbing on everybody. And me and George are in between the front seats, see, on the floor. Well, they're maniacs, you know, coming at you with rulers. Want a joint man? <laughs> Don't eat meat. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm reading a copy of The Times, you see, with a Beano in. <laughs> Old habits die hard. <laughs> well, I've done The Times crossword, you see. I mean, that's all over by The Times. And, like, it's so easy, isn't it, these days? It's, it's, uh, it's uh, six and a quarter minutes to do The Times crossword. Very easy. <clears throat> I still do it on the bus to impress people, you know, times cross for the moment. <laughs> Must be a professor. <laughs> I always leave it on the seat for them when I get off, you know, and they pick it up and they start reading words like Wugga Humftemuf. <laughs> And George, who's sitting next to me, is roaring his socks off, you know, with all these maniacs around. And I said, what are you laughing at? And then he handed me this piece of paper. And I started reading, I was falling about. Oh <laughs> dear. And uh, it is, without doubt, the, the funniest thing I've ever read. And what I'd like to do for you tonight is to read to you some genuine extracts from motor claim forms, which were uh, received by a large insurance office in London. <coughs> And basically, what happens if, if you drive around in cars and buses, you have accidents, right? 25% of the people in this country are caused by accidents. <laughs> <laughs> and when you have an accident, you have to fill in this silly claim form which the insurance people send to you, you see? And uh, you have to answer lots of silly questions like, what's your name? <laughs> they sent you the damn form. <laughs> Where'd you live? What car were you driving? How fast were you going at the time of the accident? Which is a really stupid question because everybody puts down 28 mile per hour. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the back is a big empty space and it says at the top, give in your own words a description of how the accident occurred. And this is where you get your chance to write your version of the accident down, right? Which is totally different from everybody else's. <laughs> and these are genuinely what people wrote on their claim forms when they'd had an accident and they sent it in to this insurance company. And they're all genuine, honestly. You know, people ask me if they're true and they, they really are genuine. And uh, I'll read a few to you now. <laughs> the first one. The accident was due to an invisible lorry narrowly missing me. <laughs> I ran into a stationary tree coming in the other direction. <laughs> I 
was scraping my near side on the bank when the accident happened. <laughs> the other man altered his mind and I had to run over him. <laughs> I bumped into a lamppost which was obscured by human beings. <laughs> Coming home, I drove into the wrong house and collided with a tree I haven't got. <laughs> the accident was caused by me waving to the man I hit last week. <laughs> I blew my horn but it would not work as it was stolen. I thought the side window was down, but it was up when I found out when I put my bloody head through. <laughs> this is the best one, I think. I knocked over a man, he admitted it was his fault that he'd been knocked down before. I once used to be um, in pantomime for a, um, a local playgroup near to our home. And uh, it was a production of Jesus Christ Superstar. And it wasn't meant to be a pantomime, but... <laughs> mm -hmm. And one of the guys, one of the guys knew this uh, sort of producer director from the Shakespeare Theatre. And uh, he got him along to, to do this uh, Jesus Christ Superstar for Christmas and um, he was one of these method producers like in, he used to wear grey sweaters with little ducks on <laughs> <laughs> I, I got out the way myself and <laughs> but he was into this thing that like if, if, if you really believed the part if you really got into it to the, to the point where you believed you were that person then the whole play would take on a new concept and he cast me as Jesus Christ. <laughs> Basically because we had the same initials. Uh, <laughs> also because we were both born in a barn. <laughs> and like, it's, it really worked, it really worked. I, it was amazing how, how, you, how you got into it. And, like, and, I, and like, even when I sort of finished rehearsing, I was really into the part. And, and after the play, I just couldn't get rid of the pun. I was, I was walking around Birmingham blessing people. <laughs> <laughs> I only drowned twice trying to walk across the local pond. <laughs> and I was a knockout at turning wine into water. And I finally blew it all. I finally blew it all. One day, one day I was in Solihull, and uh, I, was, I was waiting in the traffic lights, and someone ran into the back of my car, and I lost it. <laughs> in a couple of minutes, I lost it, and I got out, and I said unto him, <laughs> "Go forth and multiply." <laughs> Only not so many words, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I once took I once took my mother-in-law on a on a on a driving lesson, and again I'm not going to do any mother-in-law jokes because I've, I've got a, a real knockout mother-in-law. Oh. <laughs> test pilot in the broom factory. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and she's she's been driving since before the war and she is still to pass a test. And she, she holds the record in Warwickshire or something like that. And uh, people have said to me, you know, about her driving, and I've sort of poo-pooed it. And I said, well, I'll, I'll take you for a drive any time. And, um, and I did. And uh, it's strange, isn't it? So, some, some women and some blokes as well, uh, some people, have this ability to, to, to not to understand what mechanics are and, and its derivatives. And I am fairly like that, but my mother-in-law, 
is very non-mechanical, even down to the uh, sort of like the highway code. And she, she knows the highway code backwards. There's nothing you can ask her about the highway code. She doesn't know, even to the colours that it's printed in and where it was printed, the whole bit, you know, <laughs> bang and a catch her. But like, she can't really apply it to the driving. It's like, I got into the car, you know, we sat there and uh, she turned the engine on and she looked into the rear view mirror because that's what it says in the book, isn't it? Look into the view, rear view mirror and she pulled out, right? It doesn't matter what's coming from behind. <laughs> She looked into the rear view mirror, it's safe to pull out. <laughs> it's a ten ton truck up the back side. <laughs> so like we're, we're driving along, we've been about ten minutes and we're missing all the parked cars. Because <laughs> we're driving on the pavement. <laughs> and we're sort of pottering along and we're, we're, we're watching all the pedestrians rush by. You know? <laughs> Hi there! <laughs> Mother-in-law. <laughs> And um, sort of like, she changes gear occasionally. She doesn't know what the gear stick does, it puts oil into the brake system. I mean. It's time to change gear. Sometimes she does it with the clutch as well. And we're going up this hill, we get this really steep hill, right? And we're, we're driving up this hill and we're in top and we're doing about eight mile an hour. <laughs> But the car will never make it. <laughs> the people are driving by going, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Mother-in-law. <laughs> I thought the car will fall to bits. <laughs> and we, we got to the top of the hill with about two inches to spare. Oh, thank God for that. And she slapped it into second and went... <laughs> and running down this hill like 18 G-force on me face. <laughs> Passing everything that passed us, coming up, you know. <laughs> I couldn't get me breath. And you know, she's been driving for something like 35 years and she's never had an accident, you know that? She's seen thousands. <laughs> anyway, um, that brings us to the end of the show. And um, doesn't it go quick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I'd just like to say thanks very much for coming along. And if you're driving home, I'm, I'm going back up the Edgware Road, so uh, be careful of the bike. <laughs> Those onions are really heavy, I tell you. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much indeed. Good night. Crossroads, <laughs> sauna and massage parlour. <laughs> Miss Smith speaking. Hang on. Meg! <laughs> Meg, it's an obscene telephone call. <laughs> Will you accept the charge? <laughs> She'll be right over, my lord. 